Welcome back to Unit 5-3 here. We're going to look at some more characteristics of quadratic equations and how they're graphed and what they look like and so on. Uh, here's a math career for you. A national security analyst. Uh, there's lots and lots of information about these types of jobs, especially with movies and television, all kinds of things that uh, maybe sensationalize it a bit, but nonetheless, it's a real occupation. Um, of course, you can read here in the blue about that and you can look at your mathematics that you're going to need there to study and to uh, to really master to move forward in this field. Uh, pretty healthy salary there for something that could be rather adventuresome and uh, exciting uh, occupation there if you're interested. Alright, uh, so we're still in standard 21.0 and today we're going to learn to use uh, a graph to find the zeros of a quadratic function and something called the axis of symmetry. So two big ideas here, zeros and an axis of symmetry. All right, so the zero of a function, what does this mean, a zero of a function? This is where the graph passes through the x-axis. Now notice that whenever uh, we're talking about the x-axis, what's the value for y? Well, if we're looking at a graph here, an xy plane, notice that whenever we're talking about this uh, x-axis, well, if this is positive one, positive two, positive three, if we work backwards, two, one, well, this is zero here, isn't it? Negative one, negative two, and so on. So whenever we're talking about the x-axis, the y value has to be what number? It has to be zero. So when we're talking about a zero of a function, it's simply where a graph, or in this case a parabolic function, passes through the x-axis, okay? So in this case, what would be our, where, what would be this value where it passes through? Doesn't it pass through here at negative one? And it also passes through at positive three. Very good. So right here are our zeros, and we simply say that these are the zeros of this function. All right, with a quadratic function, you may have two x-intercepts, one x-intercept, or maybe even zero. Remember that this is our general form of a quadratic equation. So here's an example of two x-intercepts. Notice it passes through the x-axis how many times? Twice. This one here comes down, touches the x-axis at one point, and takes off again. So this has one x-intercept, or zero for that matter. And here's an example of none, okay? There are no x-intercepts here. Now when you get to Algebra 2, you will still be able to find roots here, but we call those imaginary roots. And uh, that's something that's quite a bit out of our reach right now, but you'll get there, but no, no big deal. But nonetheless, right here, this touches the x-axis twice, so there are two roots, or two x-intercepts. This touches the x-axis one time, one root, one x-intercept, one zero, you might say. And this has none, no x-intercepts. Now you notice I'm using uh, the same types of words interchangeably. X-intercepts, zeros, roots. There's also another one there that we'll use pretty soon. For this equation, when graphed, the x-intercepts occur at negative one and three right here, negative one and three. So if we were to graph this in a graphing calculator or even the old-fashioned way longhand, then we would find that we have two x-intercepts at negative one and three. Okay, here's one where if we find the zeros of the function, we're gonna end up showing that it only touches in one spot, negative four. You'll notice this equation. Does this look familiar to you? x squared plus 8x plus 16. Give me two numbers that multiply to 16 but add to 8. Well, that number is 4. And you say, yeah, but that's negative 4. Well, that's because it's set equal to 0. So if I were to ask you, if I gave you this written out, and I said um, 0 equals x plus 4 squared, well, what value for x makes this zero? Isn't that negative four? All right, that's a little preview of unit six when we get, get there, but nonetheless, that's why we call that negative four there. And it passes, hits there, right there, negative four. How about this one? Well, this graph, graph has no x-intercepts at all. So the graph uh, that does not cross the x-axis of this function has no zeros. No x-intercepts x and zeros are the same thing. We just use those interchangeably. And yeah, the High stakes testing will use different words for the same idea. Now, that's the zeros and the x-intercepts. Let's talk about something called the axis of symmetry. An axis of symmetry, if you think back to sixth or seventh grade, you guys did talk about symmetry. Symmetry, they may have given you a, a picture in art where you cut it down the middle and you paste it on one half of the paper, and then you had to sketch the other half, okay? Um, 
So an axis of symmetry is basically a line that divides a parabola or a picture in two symmetrical halves. So if you'll notice here, this is an old Roman archway where they, uh, an aqueduct where they would transfer water and, and so on. If we were to draw a line right down the center, you'll notice that I'm really not super good at drawing straight lines on this, but if you draw a line right down the center, you'll notice that this half of the parabola is the same as this half here, okay? Given some artistic license there, of course. So the, the axis of symmetry cuts a parabolic shape directly in half. Here's some examples of symmetry. Well, can you see where the axis of symmetry would be? Maybe right down the center here of this image of this butterfly. How about this? Here's a little starburst type picture. We can have an axis of symmetry here, maybe across the middle of it somewhere. In fact, there might be more than one axis of symmetry here, depending on how you look at it. How about this one? Uh, looks like some of the lady wrote the word, wrote her name Katie. Maybe she cut it out and then you unfold it. Remember that in elementary school? You'd cut your name and then unfold it and you'd have your name um, back to back like that. Okay, nice axis of symmetry right down the middle. Of course, here's the, the British, uh, what do they call this, the Union Jack, I think. Nonetheless, I don't know where they got that name from, but we see a couple of axes of symmetry here across down the middle and across side to side. So in your notebook, how about you draw the following? What do you think the axis of symmetry might be here? Or actually, I drew, I've drawn the axis of symmetry, sorry. Uh, on the left-hand side, I use the dashed line as a mirror to draw the symmetrical image of the following. What do you think would be the image of this? So take a look at that, and maybe if you want to take a second and write that down, what do you think, uh, if you were to mirror that over, what would it look like? So you've got the Roman numeral one, the Roman numeral two, the Roman numeral three. So did you get an image that looks something like this? You'll notice that this, uh, these images match each other and right down the center is this um, line, this axis of symmetry cutting the image directly in half. Do you think you could do this one? I don't know if I can do this one. I don't think I can. I'm not going to waste our time trying to, but I'd have something like this, right? So we'd have to have a two and then a one. I don't think my spacing is good there, but uh, in other words, if you were to fold that image over and unfold it, let's say it was wet ink or something, you'd have that image on the right-hand side there. All right. So the vertical line that divides a, a parabola into two symmetrical halves is called the axis of symmetry. Now here's another thing for you. The axis of symmetry always passes through the vertex. Remember from our previous lesson, the vertex um, is the, the high point on one that opens downward and the low point. And this axis of symmetry is always going to cut right through that vertex. Okay? You can use the zeros to find the axis of symmetry. So now we're going to incorporate a lot of stuff here. So take a look at the following. If we were to look at this, the easiest way to find the axis of symmetry is use the x coordinate of the vertex. Um, if we were to ask you, remember the previous lesson, we asked you to find the ordered pair of the vertex. So what would you say the ordered pair would be here? ordered pair we'd have a 1 and a negative 2 1 and negative 2 so therefore the axis of symmetry is just the x value of that notice that this line goes right down here right through the center so we're going to be looking at the axis of symmetry right there so what's our axis of symmetry it's x equals 1 and yes that will always work if you can find the vertex the x value will always be the axis of symmetry how about this one if you have a parabola that crosses the x-axis at two points you can find the axis of symmetry by finding the average of the x-intercepts. This will be a skill we'll practice some. Um, it's quite simple once you do it once or twice. But if you take a look here, where are the zeros in this function? Well, it looks like there are zeros here uh, are going to be right here and right here. So let's just give those numbers. Wouldn't this be negative 1 and this be positive 3? So the axis of symmetry we can find by dividing, or I'm sorry, by averaging the two axis x-intercepts. So here's negative 1 and here's 3. Put those together. What's negative 1 plus 3? And we're going to divide that by 2. Remember to find the average of something. You add up the items and divide by the number of items you added. So in this case we end up with looks like uh, 2 over 2 and our axis of symmetry is indeed what number? looks like a 1 right there and that kind of fits what our eye would look at if we dropped a line straight down there at 1 we'd end up with our axis of symmetry being 1 so again if you're just given a picture and they say find the axis of symmetry we 
can find that by averaging the two x-intercepts. Assuming we have two x-intercepts, right? So the axis of symmetry is x equals 1. Now, if you're only given a quadratic equation, no picture, just the quadratic equation, and you're asked to find the axis of symmetry, you have to use the following formula. Now, this has to go into your notebook, onto your note card, up here. Negative b over 2a. Negative b over 2a. So we say, well, remember those a's, b's, and c's we were looking at. We need to be able to identify the a's and b's and c's pretty soon. But we have to know this formula here, negative b over 2a. So make sure this gets put into your notebook for sure. All right, now we're going to apply that right now. We'll use the previous formula to find the axis of symmetry. So negative b over 2a. And let's we're given this equation here, y equals x squared plus 4x plus 4. So if you look here, it uh, looks like a is going to be the number 1 b is going to be the number 4, and c is also going to be the number 4. So let's identify a, b, and c here formally. a is 1, b is 4, c is 4. Now, let's plug in our values into this formula real quick and just come up with that x value to find the axis of symmetry. So I'm going to take the opposite of b, opposite of b, over 2 times a. Opposite of b over 2, what's the value for a? 1. What's negative 4 divided by 2? It's negative 2. So this axis of symmetry would cut right down the middle of the graph at negative 2. At negative 2. Alright, so in your notebook, why don't you try a couple of these. I'll work the first one out with you and then I'll let the rest, uh, let you work out the others. Let's identify a, b, and c for the following and then we're going to find the axis of symmetry. So here we go. I've got y equals x squared minus 2x I don't have a C. I'm not worried about the C at this moment anyway. So let's take a look here. Okay. So it looks like my value for A. Well, we know that if there's nothing there. We know it's a 1. And value for B looks like negative 2. And our value for C is 0. C is not really in play here anyway. This says the opposite of B. So what's our value for B? Negative 2 over... 2 times 1. Alright, so what is the opposite of negative 2? Well, that's going to be positive 2. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 divided by 2, so what's our axis of symmetry here? It looks like it's 1. If we did our math right there, and I'm sure we did. So I get an axis of symmetry at positive 1. So what that kind of sort of means, if you're looking at a graph, if you had a graph like this, and you had an image, uh, let's see, this is going to open upward, so it looks something like this. You'd have an axis of symmetry right down the center, if my thing will work right. And uh, right down the middle there, it would be at positive 1. Alright, try this one on your own here. 2x squared minus 12x plus 6. Go ahead and pause the video and uh, see what you got there. All right, let's see here. Let me work this one out with you, too. I've got the opposite of negative 12. Isn't that our value? Oh, let me go ahead and identify A, B, and C first. I got 2 here, negative 12 here, and 6 here. So the opposite of negative 12 over 2 times, what's the value for A, 2? What is the opposite of negative 12? Well, that's going to be positive 12 divided by 4. So 12 divided by 4, pretty straightforward. I'm sure you got the axis of 3. Very good. How about this one? 5x squared minus 10x plus 3. Minus 10x plus 3. So give that one a try. Let's see what you come up with. Alright, did you plug in uh, negative 10 for b? So the opposite of negative 10 is positive 10. 5 times 2 is positive 10. So I get an axis of 1. Axis of 1. All right, let's try another one here. How about this one? Y equals x squared plus 2x minus 4. Pretty simple looking equation there. Be careful with this. See what you get. All right then. How about 1 for A, 2 for B, and negative 4 for C? So negative the opposite of B over 2 times a 
And let's see, negative two divided by two. Did you end up with an answer of negative one? I hope so, negative one. Last one, I think. Negative two x squared minus eight x minus three. Negative two x squared minus eight x minus three. Give that one a try. All right, check your answer here. Let's see how you did. Did you come up with an uh, axis of negative two? Remember that negative eight here for b becomes positive eight. Two times negative four, I'm sorry, times negative two is negative four. So we end up with a positive divided by negative. So you get your negative there. All right, that's it for unit 5-3. Here's a little extra help for you if you want to take a look at those. And uh, we'll talk to you soon.